Today in 5.6, we're going to talk about the hinge theorem. Of course, we're going to start with some math humor today. Um, what did the student say when the teacher said, Today, we're going to talk about the hinge theorem. Do we need any tools? <laughs> yeah. Get it? Tools? Hinges? But to answer that question, no, you do not need tools. You just need this video. So to start things off, uh, it's important to know that we'll be looking at the inequality relationships between two triangles. In 5-5, we talked about one triangle, so now we're going to talk about two. And in fact, it's important to know that the stuff we're doing today is similar to 5-5. Five five. Now, I guess to look at something, let's, let's say we have a triangle ABC and triangle XYZ. Now, we are going to look at inequality relationships between these triangles, but we're going to look at very specific um, relationships, and certain qualities have to exist. For one, we need a side length to be congruent in, in each. You see that AB is congruent to XY, and you need AC to be congruent to XZ. So you need two sides to be congruent, as we have here. Now, what we're going to be looking at is what we call the included angle. And you notice how AB and AC both seem to touch an angle, and that angle is A. So what we call A is the included angle. And the same with the other triangle is that we will call X the included angle. Now basically what we're saying, um, or what we're trying to be looking at, is the relationship of this included angle and the last side. So we, we already know about AB, we already know about AC, we want to talk about BC. And in the other triangle, we know XY, we know XZ, we want to talk about YZ. And to do this, we're going to be using the included angle. So let's go ahead and look at what this theorem says. Theorem 5-6-1, which is the hinge theorem, says that if two sides of a triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the included angles are not congruent, then the longer third side will be across the longer included angle. I know that's a pretty long theorem, uh, but in fact what it says is not um, too dissimilar from what 5-5 uh, was about. So in fact, let's look at the picture that we just talked about so we can make some relationships and understand this theorem better. Here's the exact uh, image that we talked about in the last slide. We had one, include, or one uh, congruent side and then another congruent side. So that's, that takes care of the if two sides are congruent to two sides of another triangle. Here we do have two sides congruent. And then it says the included angles are not congruent. I didn't really denote that yet, but we'll talk about that in a second. Um, then the longer third side will be across the longer included angle. What this would mean is that let's say we have a situation where this included angle on the left triangle is let's say 42 degrees. And in the right triangle, it is let's say 51 degrees. So again, we have the situation of two sides being congruent. Um, the included angles are not congruent. 42 is not congruent to 51. Then the longer third side will be across the longer included angle. So I ask, what, what, which included in angle is bigger? Well, obviously the 51 is bigger. So what this means is that our side YZ, YZ will be bigger than BC. The length of YZ is greater than the length of BC. And this is what this hinge theorem says. Our first example says, uh, just to compare the lengths of EF and FG. So just for reference, that's EF and FG. So how we do this, when I read these directions, I need to start thinking about possibly the hinge theorem to compare those lengths. So the hinge theorem says that we must have two sides congruent. Immediately we need that. Do we have two sides congruent? Uh, let's go ahead and write that down. Two sides congruent. You first need this. You need to recognize this. Um, let's see here. Well, one we do. Yes, there's EH and HG. Those are congruent. So we have EH is congruent to HG. 
uh, but we need another side. Looking at this, I see, and don't forget about this stuff, FH is congruent to FH. It's the same line. FH has to be congruent to FH. Just as a reminder, that is by the reflexive property. So that's the first uh, criteria we need, is that two sides must be congruent, which they are. Uh, let's go ahead and mark that. Now it says that the longer side will be across from the included angle, the bigger included angle. The included angles we're talking about here is this 82 and then this blue angle to the right. We're talking about these included angles. So we need to ask which one is bigger. Well, I only see 82 degrees. I don't actually know what this blue angle is. So we have to find that out. How? How many degrees are in a line? Do you see a line here? 82 and the blue angle, the green angle and blue angle are supplementary. They make a line. And so I could say that the measurement of angle FHG will be equal to 180 degrees, there's 180 degrees in a line, minus 82. And that will give us 98 degrees. Meaning that this angle here is 98. Meaning, which side is bigger using this hinge theorem? Hinge theorem, we have a, or a larger included angle over here, so FG must be bigger. So we can instantly say that the length of FG is greater than the length of EF. And that is by the hinge theorem. And now we are done. Okay, our second example says that we must find the range of values for x. Now if you remember, this is very similar to what we did in 5.5, five, uh, but now we're talking about two triangles. So I look at this triangle, and first thing I notice is that we have two sides congruent. We have one side, which is this long one, and we have the little guys are congruent. So we can say two sides are congruent and thus because these are congruent we can use the hinge theorem okay now looking at this um, the hinge theorem tells us that the included angle here's our included angle of 38 and of 46 the included angle, the bigger one, which is 46, will have a, a bigger third side, meaning our 36 will be larger than 6x minus 6. So let's go ahead and say that. We can say that 36 is greater than 6x minus 6. And now we solve for x. We add 6. 42 is greater than 6x. And divide by 6 to see that 7 is greater than x. Again, I like to say x on the left-hand side. So I'll change this to say that x, if 7 is greater than x, then x must be less than 7. Okay, now we need to continue. One more thing, and this one is kind of tricky. It's a tricky step. We have a side length of 6x minus 6. It's in a triangle. No matter what this side length is, what does it have to be greater than? Well, it has to be greater. Each side length, any distance ever, has to be greater than zero. And so that's what we say then for our second um, inequality. 6x minus 6 has to be greater than zero because it's a distance. And now we solve for x the same way. And we see 6x is greater than 6. And we divide by 6. And we get x is greater than 1. So x is going to be greater than 1 but less than 7. And so that's exactly what we can say, um, is that you could write it out and you could say between 1 and 7. And that's a perfectly fine answer. Or if you like compound inequalities, you could say that uh, 1 is less than x is less than 7. Both of those are fine answers. 
But that's how we uh, go about this one, use it just using two triangles and the hinge theorem. Hope you understood. Again, write down any questions you may have and make sure you're asking.